Okay, welcome to this section on AWS IoT Device Shadows. Now, this is my most requested topic that I didn't originally publish in my course criteria. So I wanted to talk about it now because it's actually a really powerful topic. So I appreciate my students letting me know they wanted to hear more about this. Now, I will say this about AWS IoT Device Shadows and Shadow State. It's not complex, but it's super confusing. It's like using callbacks in JavaScript, pointers in C, or as we described earlier, IAM policies. It gets super confusing because it's an abstract concept because it doesn't really look like anything else we've done in this course. But the best way to handle abstract concepts is to practice with them. So after this initial lecture, I'm going to go through several examples of using shadow state and shadow state topics to show you exactly how they work in this published subscribe model using the MQTT protocol. So after I do that, I think you're going to really understand better how to use device shadows. And you can kind of think of device shadows as normal topics on steroids. Because unlike just normal topics, by using this key phrase, dollar sign AWS, with these different shadow state topics, we get current state held on the cloud. So when a device is disconnected and we reconnect that device or a new device, we can grab the last known good state. You can't do that with a normal publisher subscribe topic because AWS doesn't inherently know to keep the current state on the cloud. So let's talk about a few concepts regarding device shadow state before we get into these examples that I'm going to go over. So first of all, device shadows can be based on HTTP or MQTT. From what I've seen out in the field, 95% of the time it's MQTT, and that's what we're going to be doing here. It sets up just like WebSockets do or HTTP can, it sets up duplex communication. That means with this MQTT publish and subscribe model where we can publish to topics and subscribe to topics, we get that free callback that free return value on our subscription topic. And unlike HTTP, why MQTT is generally considered better for IoT, there's no overhead by sending topics and data back and forth. Whereas with HTTP, we have to reconstruct the whole protocol every time we want to resend something or receive something. That's why MQTT is better in general for IoT. The protocol itself is not any lighter weight than HTTP. That's a common misunderstanding, but it automatically establishes duplex communication. So that's kind of what's better about it for IoT. Now, the second thing I'll mention about these AWS IoT device shadows and shadow state is there's 10 predefined topics. So these predefined topics are usually published or subscribed topics. Here in this course, I'm going to talk about four out of these 10 topics, but don't worry. After you understand these four most important topics, the other six will be very clear how to use looking at the documentation. But the AWS documentation describing shadow states and shadow topics doesn't use any examples. So it's very hard to kind of figure out what's going in until you get a chance to play with them on the device. Secondly, all the examples that I found out in the wild on the internet, on YouTube, when I was doing my research to present a better presentation for this, we're going over how to use it on a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to show you how to use it on the ESP8266 and the ESP32. And we have the capability to do that with that MQTT pub sub library, which allows for shadow states. So this is probably going to be something you're not going to find anywhere else. And we can use that script that we've been used to using that provides a publish and subscribe topic ability. So I think that's pretty cool. The last thing I'll say in this lecture before we get on to actually implementing this stuff is shadow state on AWS requires a specific format. The format, just like we're used to before, is JSON, but it's this state reported or state desired format. So looking at the bottom of my screen here, you'll see this is a typical publish or subscribe data format that we need. We always need state, and in the second line here, this JSON packet, we need to either state reported or desired. And then from there, we can use our normal JSON parameters and variables and key value definitions. But we always, when we send a data packet or receive a data packet via publisher subscribe, 
we have to have state and then we have to have either reported or desired. Okay, so next let's check out how to set up basic shadow state on AWS and we'll do that through AWS IoT Core. So I'm going to go over here to AWS IoT Core and I'm going to go click manage. And the first thing we have to do is create a thing. So under manage, I go to things and under things, I'm going to go ahead and create a new thing. So I'm going to create a single thing. And it's going to ask me first for a name, so I'm going to call this my thing, and I'll call it 518, just for the date. I'm not going to have any type for the thing. I'm not going to have any group for the thing. I don't need any of this. This is just to help you organize your things better. I'm not going to have any attribute key value pair next. Now, it's going to say, hey, do you want to create certificates relative to this thing? I'm going to tell you a dirty little secret. You don't need certificates within a thing group. You can use that same certificate, private key, and X509 root for your thing. You do not have to create certificates within the thing itself. In every other example I've seen out there, they always do that because they think you have to. You don't have to. So as long as you already have your private key, your client certificate, and your X509 root, you don't need a new one. You can keep using the one you have because you can think of these things as just topic groups. They're basically a group of topics matched by a name where it keeps the current state of your device within this topic group. So I'm going to go ahead and create this without certificates because, again, I can use the certificates that I already have. All right, so it created my new thing, and here it is, my thing, 518. And you're just going to want to check that it's enabled and it is enabled by default and of course I can go up here to my previous things and I can delete them or disable them so within my thing I want to show you a few things here first of all my shadow this is my shadow it's empty now because I actually don't have anything on my shadow I'm going to show you how to fill this when I publish to my thing secondly under interact it gives me all 10 topics that i can use and we're going to be playing with four of these 10 topics the topics that we're not going to demonstrate you'll easily understand after i go through the four most important topics because it's going to be very clear what the remaining six do let's go ahead and start going over examples how to use aws iot device shadow states and use these predefined publish and subscription topics Okay, let's move on with our first example. What we're going to do first is test it from the AWS IoT Core console, and then we're going to show how to implement our first example on the device itself. All right, so let's go to IoT Core, and I'm going to open two consoles, and you're going to see why I do that just to make things easier. Each console is going to represent a different device, a publishing device and a subscribing device in this case, and then I'm going to show you how to implement this on the device itself. But it's easier to comprehend the topic if we first do it virtually from the console. Okay, so I'm going to go over to test. And I'm going to do the same thing on the second console. Now, the first topic that I want to use on my thing, I go here to the thing I just created. I go to interact, shadow update. So what shadow update's going to do, it's going to publish under this topic. And this is going to allow the cloud to hold the current state of the device. So I'm going to copy this topic here and I'm going to publish from this topic here. So I'm going to hit over here, paste that in there. Good to go. Now I'm going to subscribe to the same topic, but the subscription has a different name. The subscription has the name shadow update accepted. So assuming our shadow update is correct, it's going to accept that shadow and it's going to publish that payload. So I'm going to subscribe to that topic. Now what I want to go back here and do from my publish is put in that JSON payload. And again, that JSON payload has to have that specific form. Paste it in here. Now I'm going to publish on this topic. And then if everything worked out and I have valid JSON, I'm going to have received it over here on my update accepted subscription. Remember, this is a subscription, even though it sends this over here to publish by default. That's just the behavior of the AWS console. It doesn't really mean anything. And it also gives us this metadata. So let's go check out what that looks like on our device shadow. So if I go back over here, I have the activity tab. And you'll notice the first two were rejected. This is because I didn't show you this. It was off screen. My JSON formatting was incorrect. I forgot a comma. So this will tell you under activity. 
if there's a client ID conflict, if you don't have JSON formatted correctly. So this can be a useful screen if something goes wrong. But you'll see that last message I published where my JSON was correct. It's here and it's okay. So we can go ahead and change this. So let's go ahead back here and now I'll just change one, two, three randomly to two, two, three, four. And you'll see that that'll update the shadow. Again, over here, it'll publish the new packet and it'll also give us the new incoming time of each variable. And you'll see that's contrasted to the older time of these variables. So whenever you change these variables, you'll get a new update in time. Go back here, check the state, and you'll see that it updated here. And also our shadow document is updated here. And I can retrieve this shadow state, but I'm not going to do this in this lecture. Next, instead of demonstrating this virtually, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this on the device and then show you some cool things we can do from within the device. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's look at our Arduino scripts and see how we can have a publisher and a subscriber and utilize that shadow state. So the first thing we'll look at is our publisher. Now you've seen this script before, I've just changed a few things. So the first thing I've changed is I've added a char pointer just to say empty on that message. We'll probably work with that later. But remember it had to have that format state desire. So I added the message there and I added these escapes because it has to come in in that specific format which I'm gonna show you in a second. Now, the other thing I changed is if you look at my publishing topic, I changed it to the shadow topic. So it's gonna have that thing we just created always goes here, shadow update. This'll update our shadow on the AWS cloud with this published message. So that's the only differences I had to do with our Arduino sketch to publish to that shadow straight. Let's look at our subscriber. So I go over here to our subscriber and it looks pretty much the same, but I don't have to publish anything. So I kind of just grayed out the publishing right here because I'm just subscribing for this example. So look at the subscription. I had to make one change. Actually, I had to make two changes is I subscribed to shadow update accepted. Remember the other one was my thing 518 shadow update. This one's my thing 518 shadow update accepted. That will bring in that shadow topic that we published from the other device. And I'm going to show you that in a second. And then the other thing is PubSign connect. That's your client ID. That's part of that PubSub library. And that's what's under that activity tab on the cloud on AWS. So in this case, you really don't want your publisher and subscriber to have the same ID under your PubSub client connect. Because again, this just signifies a client ID, which gets pushed to the cloud. They should, just like I state here, they should be unique. So your subscriber and publisher should have their unique ID. So what I did is I just created a separate thing and I called this 518.2. I just add on the two for the second one. Remember the publisher is my thing 518. So that's important because what can happen is under that activity tab in things, it's gonna say duplicate client ID. If I keep this ID the same as my publisher ID. So that's the reason for that. So this is the only two things you need to do on your Arduino sketch for your subscriber. And I'll provide you both these sketches for this example. So let's go ahead and run these sketches. I'll open two different serial ports with the publisher and the subscriber. And then I'll show you in the AWS IoT core console how we can see what their state is and how we can actually send subscription topics to our subscribing device by acting like a second publisher. And then we'll actually do something relevant to this. So let's do that next. Okay, here are both my devices, publishing and subscribing. So I have my publishing device on COM port 3, and I have my subscribing device on COM port 5. Again, I had to change that client ID because you can't have the same client ID on both the publisher and the subscriber. Otherwise, you're going to have conflict on that client ID in that activity tab under your things. But now that I have it working correctly, you can see here that it's sending the message to the subscriber under that update accepted as all this metadata. So because this is an extremely long message, there's something you probably are gonna need to do. And you didn't need to do it previously in this course because we generally restricted our messages to 128 characters. 
But within the PubSub library, there is a macro, and the macro in the PubSub library, you just go to your Arduino library, PubSub master is, src, PubSub client .h is, and you're going to need to find this max package side. This is the maximum size in characters or bytes, same size as 8 bits on the Arduino environment that your message package can be on your subscription or your publishing topic. So the default when you downloaded the zip file or you downloaded the library was 128. You're going to need to get that subscription topic working. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything sent back. You're going to need to change this to 256, 512, or 1024. I suggest you just change this to 512. I made a note of that in the sketch, and I know students have had problems, but it's an issue that's been around for four years. So generally you want a smaller package size, but then a smaller package size can't handle all that metadata coming back from the device. So I suggest you just change this to 512 bytes. Again, and that's in the PubSub client.h. So you're probably going to need to change that. So now let's talk about one last thing before we move on to the next lecture. And it's go ahead and checking state and publishing directly from our AWS IoT console. So I'm just going to go over here. So I'm just going to change this so I recognize this message as 111111111. So I'll publish it right from the console. And this is something handy you can do in real life if you need to update your state. Publish that, close this out, and let's make sure we got that message. And indeed, we got it right down here. If you scroll over here, we'll see we received this 111. It sent all that metadata too, so it looks really messy, but there it is right there. 1111111. So you see we can publish directly from the IoT console and subscribe from the IoT console. So not only are these devices publishing and subscribing to each other, we can interrupt that by updating the messages directly from the AWS console. So that's a nice added feature of using the AWS console with these shadow states. But of course, we could have done that with normal topics as well. So on that note, let's move on and Based on the message incoming on our subscription topic, we can take some action on our subscriber. So what that means is our publisher sends a message where it sends the temperature. And on the subscribing device, we can check what the temperature is. And if the temperature is too high and there's an alert condition, we can actually do something now on the subscribing device based on that incoming payload that's showing a high temperature. So let's move on and talk about how we would implement that on the device. Okay, welcome back to the course. Now, in this section, I want to talk about using multiple topics from the publisher to the subscriber and from the publisher to the AWS cloud to republish a message. So I'm going to show you three different techniques to send messages from your ESP8266 publisher. And depending on how those messages are sent and how we want to subscribe to them, we're going to perform three different kinds of actions. So I think you're going to find this lecture pretty interesting. So I put those top two images so you kind of get the idea that the topics and the publishers and subscribers are fungible. You can have one device publishing to four subscribers, three publishers going to two subscribers, with any mix of topics. And the other thing to remember is this includes custom topics as well as, of course, IoT shadow device topics. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to mix and match them. I'm just going to have one publisher and one subscriber. But again, understand that a realistic model for this, since I'm showing you three different techniques, would be one publisher and I would put a different subscriber on each board. And with these incoming topics, I'm going to have actions where I blink the lights at different frequencies on the subscriber. And those would equate to actionable steps like turning on the refrigeration, turning off the refrigeration, opening or closing a door, lighting a light bulb. All those things can be done physically on the device depending on how we parse that payload coming in. And I'm going to show you some different techniques to do that. So on that note, the first technique I'm going to show you is what we've seen before in the previous lecture with just a normal publisher subscriber. But I'm going to use string tokenization to parse out my JSON payload directly on the device and extract the temperature, do a check on that temperature to see if it's above a certain number of degrees. And if so, I'm going to blink the light. Secondly, I'm going to send a custom topic called alert high temperature. 
from my publishing ESP device over to my subscribing ESP device. And then I'm just going to do a string compare where it's going to look at the incoming subscription topic. And if it matches that alert high temp, then I'm going to blink the lights at a different frequency. And then the third example is I'm going to republish messages on a different topic. So what this does is again, it sends that common shadow update message, just like we did in the first but it's going to go to the AWS IoT cloud on that MQTT broker, get sent to an action, and it's going to do that SQL statement rule. It's going to check what's coming in under the humidity. And if the humidity exceeds a certain amount, it's going to republish the message under a custom topic name. Then it's going to be sent out to the subscribing ESP device. Then we're going to blink the lights contingent on that incoming topic. So I know that's pretty confusing, but I'm going to go over the code and then you'll see how we can perform different actions contingent on what's incoming in our different published and subscribed topics via this MQTT broker. Okay, so let's go over the first publish and subscribe action we're going to take, and this is the easiest. So the first one I'm going to discuss is, again, we're posting this big payload here with all these different variables and key value pairs. As you know, to AWS things, my thing, shadow, update. So that's going to remain the way it was, but I'm going to do a contingency check. So on this temperature variable, it ranges from 30 to 110. I'm saying here, if the temperature variable is over 90, I'm going to send off a message under a different publishing topic. So I'm going to fill the array with the current temperature in the appropriate format. Again, for shadow state, we need this state reported or state desired. And I'm just sending off the temperature. So instead of this big payload, I'm just sending off the temperature as a float. And then I'm going to make a topic published called alert high temp. I fill it with that temperature data and go ahead and send it off to the cloud, the MQTT broker on AWS IoT. It's going to hit the broker and get published out to our receiving device, our subscription device. So let's go see what the code looks like to subscribe to this topic. So I'm going to the code over here on our subscribing device. So this is where on the sketch that all these topics are incoming to. So the first thing I'm going to do when I get an incoming topic is I'm just simply going to check the name of the incoming topic. So I've already subscribed to a topic called alert high temp, which you have to do. So for all three topics that I'm gonna use in these examples, I have a subscription to that. I'll show you where that is. So here's my subscription right down here. I've subscribed to the normal, which you've seen in the previous example. That's the shadow update accepted and it's sending out shadow update on the publishing device. And then I've subscribed to these additional two topics, alert high temp and alert high humid. And of course, in this example, we're dealing with the incoming alert high temp from that publishing device if we have a temperature exceeding 90 degrees as a separate topic. So again, back up here to the beginning on my incoming topic right here, if it comes in over here and the topic matches from the publishing device alert high temp, this is a string compare. If this string matches, it returns a zero. So that may seem kind of weird because usually a Boolean false is zero and a true is one. But with string compare, the true is zero and I think a false is negative one. So just understand this is a true condition. So I'm saying if the topic is alert high temp coming from our publishing device, then I'm going to blink the light five times. And with the ESP8266 and the ESP32 I'll check, it's actually active low. So I'm starting off active low, that means the light goes on, then active high. And you can change the delay, so this is a fast blink, one-tenth of a second, but you can change this to any amount of blinks you want and how long of a blink you want. And I'm going to show you at the end of this lecture, the COM ports open with the publisher and subscribing device, the device payload getting sent back and forth, and the lights blinking contingent on what's in that topic. So hold on for that at the end of this lecture. All right, so let's move on to the second action we're going to take, and that's going to be a republish action from AWS IoT Core. Okay, so here we are back in AWS IoT Core. So I'm going to create a new action, and I'll name this republish 518, if I can type it correctly this time. All right, so here's the tricky part. I need an SQL statement here for my republish. It's just going to extract one of the variables from my publishing ESP device. So here's what I want to do. 
I'm going to stick in this. And what this is, is it's going to select and it digs into that JSON structure, state reported, and I'm going to grab humidity as an alert. And I'm going to take that publishing topic from the publishing ESP. Again, it's under shadow update. That's our publishing device topic. And I'm going to take that humidity only where the state reported humidity is more than 80. So if we go back to the sketch over here, I range the humidity from 40 to 95. And again, it's just going to get sent out of this general topic. So I'm not sending out a subtopic like I did in the previous example. It's going to intercept the main topic here, the main shadow update topic. It's going to extract humidity from that topic. And then in this SQL statement, it's going to look that humidity is over 80. If it's over 80, I'm going to republish it. I'm going to do that by adding an action here. And the action I'm going to choose is republish a message to an AWS IoT topic. Go ahead and click that and configure the action. And the topic I'm going to choose is, and you've already seen this because I've subscribed to this on the subscribing ESP device, alert high humid. And again, if we go to the subscribing device, you can see that's one of the subscriptions we have right here. So that's what we're going to republish that shadow update message as alert high humid only when that humidity is greater than 80. And I'll keep QS as zero. That's fine for prototyping. So let's go ahead and create a role. I'm just going to call it my republish role 518. It really doesn't matter. And it's going to give it republishing permissions. So go ahead and create that role and add that action. And we're good to go. Create that rule. And let's just make sure it's enabled. So I go down here, republish 518. And just make sure when you refresh this that it's enabled. Okay, so now what's going to happen, of course, is my main ESP device is going to publish that full shadow update message. AWS IoT Core MQTT Broker is going to select the humidity out of that package. Make sure if the humidity is over 80, I republish under that alert high humidity message. And again, that's over here subscribed on my device. So when that humidity message comes in, I'm going to do another contingency check right here. Hey, string compare this incoming republish message of alert high humidity. If that is indeed the topic coming in from that action rule, then I'm going to again blink the light. This time I'm going to blink it three times on a half second blink based on this string compare that it actually matches. So I have a different blink sequence if I get a high humidity on a message republish. Okay, well, I've saved the best for last, so let's go over the hardest one we're going to do. I hope this won't confuse you, but this is the last incoming subscription topic we have to worry about. So let's discuss this next. So I'm going to go back here to my publishing device. And again, I'm publishing off this whole message here into my shadow update. So I'm not publishing to any new topic and I'm not doing any contingency checking. So this gets sent out and on the subscription device, again, we're taking this whole message in. But however, in this case, instead of doing a string compare, I'm going to go down here and just parse the whole message directly with a string tokenization. So I kind of regret doing this in a way because this is going to look pretty complicated unless you know how to do C. And there's easier ways to do that. If I bring in an additional library like the regex library or the Arduino JSON library, and I'll make an overlay to show you so you can explore those, or even an indexing function like index of, which is provided in the Arduino environment, it's easier than using old school string tokenization but the string tokenization is pretty efficient. So what it basically does is I tokenize by any delimiter that's a blank space or a comma. That's going to provide me a number of tokens. And then I'm going to extract the tokens by pointer math to take out my temperature token. And then when I show you this next where I have both comp ports open and the boards are shown in the subscreen, you're going to see how this works. But it's going to take out whatever the current temperature is and I'm going to use ATOI, which is alpha to an integer down here from that pointer. And it's going to convert it into a number. Then this is what you've seen before. If the temperature is under 50, then I'm going to say, hey, we got an alert. The temperature is too cold. We better turn on the heaters or whatever we want to do. 
but we're gonna parse the screen and convert that by tokenization into an integer, check the integer is under 50, and then blink the lights according to that. So this code's gonna be a little more complicated than you probably like. You can look over this and the only thing you're gonna to need to change if you wanna customize this is you're gonna to wanna to change the delimiter here and here. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to change the position depending on what you're trying to extract from that incoming JSON package. Okay, so that completes the three different ways. I'm gonna use publish and subscribe topics to get actionable data. And then in the final minute of this lecture, I'm just gonna have two COM ports windows open with the publisher and the subscriber. You'll see the packages being delivered back and forth and you'll see the different light sequences going on depending on what values in those key value pairs are being delivered. So let's go check that out and then we'll go on to our next example. All right, as you can see, I have COM port 7 open up top. That's the publisher. I have COM port 3 open on the bottom. That's the subscriber, both ESP devices. Now on the left, I have the AWS IoT core console open, and I have subscriptions to three different topics, the shadow update accepted, alert high temp, and alert humid. You can see the lights going on when different topics are notified and the green dot will go on when each topic is hit by the device. So if I go over here, I can see my temperature topic. There my humid topic was just hit. The lights blink sequence went on for that topic. And this one's coming in every cycle no matter what. And it's gonna produce that random temperature and humidity and a continual uptime which will keep getting incremented up per loop. But this just demonstrates really what's going on with these topic subscription and publishing. So you can watch these green lights and you can see the lights blinking on the bottom right hand corner and the message is getting updated if one of those high temperatures, low temperatures or high humidity alerts is hit. I probably should have some background music, but I don't. Okay, so far we've talked about handling topics and parsing topics and republishing topics for both publish and subscribe for our PubSub library on our ESP devices. But we really haven't had need to keep current state and use current state of these devices. So in this lecture, I wanna give you a short introduction and walkthrough and sketch about how to really use current state under what kind of scenario you would wanna use the current state held on the AWS cloud and then subscribe to on the device. So I've created this scenario. Imagine you have a trucking company and these trucks come in contact with these truck stops. Now, when they enter Wi-Fi range, they log their current time, weight, and latitude and longitude, but when they leave the truck stop, they have no Wi-Fi contact. We're trying to save money so they're not on cellular or LoRa or Sigfox, they're just doing Wi-Fi. So the other trucks may wanna know the last good state of their fellow truckers. So let's say we have three trucks. I'm only showing two trucks here. How would we do that? Well, as before, we would publish to shadow update. That would put the current state of the truck when they're in Wi-Fi range up into the cloud. But the other trucks, and in this case, there's two other trucks. There's truck one, truck two, and truck three. But in this case, truck one could get the last known good state of truck two and truck three by doing a shadow get with these empty brackets and retrieving the current state with a shadow get accepted. So truck one would publish to shadow get for truck two and shadow get for truck three, and then it would subscribe to get accepted for truck two and truck three. So I'm gonna show you next how that would work virtually on the cloud emulating these other trucks. And then I'm gonna show you the sketch on how that would work if each truck had an IoT device on board. The good news to make this a little bit easier, we can use the same sketch for all three trucks. The only thing we need to do is comment out which other trucks we're communicating with relative to the truck that we're in. And that's a little bit confusing, but you're gonna obviously see that easily when I give you this demo. So let's move on to the cloud. So I can show you next from the AWS IoT Core MQTT broker, how to emulate these shadow topics, and then finally we'll look at the sketch on how to put these actually on the device. Okay, here we are back in our AWS IoT Core console with our MQTT broker and I'm in the things area of the console. So you see what I've done here is I created three things group for shadow topic sets, truck one, 
truck two and truck three. So here's how we can interact with these different truck topic groups. Let's say we go to truck one. Now I deleted the current shadow that I created before. We simply delete it. Now I can create a new shadow document, but to show you how this would emulate actual truck on the road with the IoT enabled device, let's go ahead and update our shadow document from the road. So I'm going to go here to the MQTT broker and I'm simply going to publish this fake data payload here. So I pasted it in here and it has what the package we're going to use in the next lecture where we go over the sketch, but it has a connection time, which is just a pointer to that current time gram from that NAST pool. It's got the truck weight and it's got the latitude and longitude and an ancillary message we can use from a distribution center. So all I need to do is publish this to that shadow update to update our truck one status. So what that would look like is go over here and I'm just going to copy truck one shadow update. Again, this is the one topic that we're pretty much going to use whenever we deal with shadow topics. So I'll publish this update, publish that. And now when we come back here to truck one, we have this. Now I can do the same thing to set a shadow for truck two and truck three by simply coming over here and changing truck one to truck two. And I can change this to whatever I want. I'll just say two, 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 publish that. And then if I come back over here, I can go to the truck two group, look under the current shadow. And now I have two, two, two as the current weight, which will be generated randomly from the sketch. So you understand that how that works. That's not a surprise to anybody. We've kind of already covered this, but let's do something a little bit more interesting and productive, which we haven't done virtually emulating this. Let's go back over here and let's use a publish to truck to shadow get. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to publish this empty bracket. So this is just going to look like this. I'm just going to publish empty brackets. So when it sends this empty brackets out, what it does is if we're subscribed to get accepted under truck two, we'll get whatever the last good state was. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go back to this console. I'm just going to move this over here, move over here, go back to the test console. So I'm going to subscribe over here to get accepted, but I have to put in truck two because that's what we're publishing that empty brackets to. So subscribe to get accepted from truck two, come back over here, truck two shadow get publish that. And then we see what the current state was. Again, remember that 2222 two, two, two was held as the current shadow state on truck two. When I publish that empty message get to truck two shadow get, and I subscribe to shadow get accepted over here, I now receive the current weight. And I can do the same thing for truck one. So if I move this to truck one, and then I want to subscribe first, I'll go ahead and subscribe to truck one shadow get accepted subscribe to that topic and now when i publish this truck one shadow get i'll get that one 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 as the weight for the current status so when i come over here you can see now i have that for truck one shadow get accepted it just sent it that one 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 and then of course truck two has that two 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 so that's how that works so in the next lecture we'll actually show this with the sketch and how this would work on the device but i wanted to do this lecture first so you understand in a virtual fake environment really what's going on before we go to the live environment with the sketch so let's do that next okay now's our chance to go over this arduino script for our shadow state git and our shadow state git accepted and see how that changes the state on the cloud so this is kind of a familiar sketch with you if you remember from our advanced iot analytics section but what this does is it assigns to a two-dimensional array random gps coordinates for random cities i added a random weight of trucks averaging between 50,000 and 100,000 pounds you can adjust that how you like and then finally i added the current time the connect time now the connect time is just a time pointer i created down here and it takes the current time from this pool ntp organization time list but the thing about this and i've had this question from students they're like well why are we using uptime wouldn't current time be better well yeah it probably would but the problem is every loop we don't want it going trying to connect to a time server external to our device. So I really only wanna grab this time as the entry point for when the truck is in Wi-Fi range and enters the truck stop. So I only grab it once. 
So just remember on this, we're only getting the current time of when the truck enters the truck stop. And then when it leaves the truck stop, we don't have that time till it hits the Wi-Fi of the next truck stop. But this is all emulated anyway. So that's kind of just conjecture. Okay, so it sends this out. So that's the current message it sends out. So here's how this work. We're gonna use what we used before, shadow update. But if we're here in truck three, this is emulating truck three, we don't wanna shadow update truck one and truck two. So if you were in truck one, you would shadow update for truck one if you were in truck one or shadow update for truck two if you're in truck two. Now I grade this out here, but this should be active if you're doing it realistically. I was just doing some testing. If I'm in truck three, as I am in this emulated example sketch, I want to do the shadow get with that empty bracket to the other two trucks on the road. That would be truck one and truck two. So I would have three publishing topics, shadow update on the truck that I'm in and shadow get for the two other trucks I'm not in. So when I use shadow get accepted in my subscribing topic, I get the current last known state of truck one and truck two. So finally, let's see what that looks like. Okay, coming down to the subscription topics, we're in truck three. So what I want to do is get the current status after publishing shadow get of the two trucks that we're not in. So truck one shadow get accepted. I want to subscribe to that to see what the current state is and truck two shadow get accepted. I don't need truck three shadow get accepted because I'm in truck three. So there's no need for me to retrieve the current state because I know what the current state is. I'm in the truck. So anyways, I hope that was understandable. And again, we're going to shadow update from the truck that we're in. We want shadow get truck one, publish that empty bracket and shadow get truck two, publish that empty bracket. So we can retrieve the trucks via the subscription topics to the two other trucks that we're not in. Anyways, I hope that makes sense and that was an enjoyable lecture and you understand more about shadow state and how it can be used. It's kind of like topics on steroids because now we have current state held on the cloud when we go offline. And that's really the value of these shadow states.